praise you right now for this healing prayer. For prayer can be in song. Somebody needed to hear this morning. And no matter what the enemy says, the blood still works. Somebody needs to hear this morning that every strike you bore on Calvary was so we can walk around holistically healed. My mind is healed. My body is healed. My family is healed. Everything we touch is covered under your blood. So today, God, we give you glory and honor. And we thank you for being a God who never fails. Thank you, praise God. God bless you. I'm getting ready to go into a message. Thank the Holy Spirit. You know, God is awesome. He knows how to tie things together. I believe somebody out there, please hit us up in the chat if you receive your healing today. You know, healing is not just physical. Let us know. We're going to go into a message that's very dear to my heart. But uh, I don't know right now if it's going to be a one part or a two message, two parts. It's going to be time will dictate. If I get through it today, I do. If I don't, we'll just pick this up next week. Go to your Bibles very quickly and go with me to. Book of Psalms, powerful book. The Book of Psalms. Thank you, musicians and praise team. They got me stirred up this morning. The Book of Psalms. Psalms 19. Go to Psalms 19. Um, because it's a very short psalm, it's only. 14 verses. I'm going to read the whole thing, so follow along with me as we read through this psalm. Verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night shows knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their line is going out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoices like a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat. Thereof, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord are pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More are they to be desired than gold, yea, than fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his error? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent. From the great transgression, let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. We're going to talk about this psalm today from this perspective, from this thought. God does not need a cosine. It'll make sense. It'll come together as we preach. God does not need a cosine. I just entered a supermarket on one of my honeydew missions. Anybody who's been married a long time understands what a honeydew mission is. It's where your honey, preferably your wife or your girlfriend or somebody who gives you orders, says, go do this, do something or some things, and you do it with a smile because you want to keep things together. Well, I just entered, I decided to go through the produce section, and watch this, I saw this 
young lady, as I entered, she was on the phone having a conversation, giving somebody a piece of her mind, and she did not even care who heard her. As a matter of fact, she was looking around like, I hope somebody does say something to me. I'm going to give you the same thing I'm giving this person on the other end of this phone. Well, when she was talking, it was kind of loud, but here is what she said. She said, uh-uh, no, just stop it. Stop it, stop it. I'm tired of this. Quit playing games. If you want her, just tell me you want her. Don't be playing around with me. If you want her, let me know, and I'll go. Just stop it and let me know what's going on. Well, the person on the other end of the phone must have said something, because then she said, uh-uh, no, no, no. I told you, just stop it. I'm tired of this. As a matter of fact, I'm done. When you get serious and you grow up, give me a call back. Well, I want you to know this lady's encounter was a chance encounter from the Holy Spirit because it led me into how I was going to show you the beauty and the splendor of Psalms 19. You say, Pastor, how is that going to do that? I'm going to share that with you. Because I got this thinking about Psalms 19 being a psalm that reflects uh, a total revelation of who God is, who His Word is, what His power does, and how He's blessing us. And then I thought, what about if God were to really talk to us about how some of us are living our lives? What about, what would God say to us through some of the things that we are doing? And I believe, just like this lady, for some of us, God would just say, listen to me, stop it. Just stop it. No. If you want me, then let me know. If you trust me, then trust me. Don't keep going back and forth. Make up your mind if you want to trust me. But I'm tired right now, so let me know. What God is saying is he wants you to stop it. Stop what, God? Here it is. Stop saying you trust me. And sit around worrying all day. Stop saying that you believe me, but don't know if I can get you out of this situation now. Stop saying, God, you're my all in all, but you never talk to me. Stop saying, I believe you, but I still have problems that I don't know if you can get me through. Stop saying, and start doing, here is the problem. God is saying, you need to stop trying to tell me how to bless you. Here's the problem. Know what you're doing? You're telling God, Lord, you know what? My life will be better if, stop, right there, get it? You are telling God, I know you're God, but you know what, God? You're just not enough. You don't have enough power to get me through this. That's what you're saying. Because you're telling God, my life will be better if. You may not say that in words, but that's what we do by our actions. We say, God, I'm going to serve you, but my life will be better. Watch this. If you let me co-sign and help you out. Co-sign? What do you mean co-sign? Here's how. It will be better because you'll say, God, I will really believe you if you showed up now. And we commence to give God all these conditions that he has so he can be God. God, I would really trust you better if I got through some of this trouble. I would really trust you better if these things weren't happening in my life. I could really get into you if you would do it this way. Now, God, if you did this, I would know you're God. God is saying, stop it. I'm here to tell you a word from God, a word from Psalm 19. I need you to understand something. Many of you are missing your blessings because you're sitting around worrying about what you're going through, how long you've been in it, when is God going to get you out, when God said, I don't need your help. I got your life under control. Here's what I want you to know. God doesn't need your co-signer. He don't need you to co-sign his existence. He, don't, he knows how to be God. He don't need you to co-sign his power. He doesn't need you to co-sign his ability to get you out. You are messing up your life by putting conditions on God that have nothing to do with his power. And God is telling you, make up your mind. 
stop it. Today we're going to see Psalms 19. It's full of a revelation about the glory of God. But you must first understand, if you're going to make it to the present trial that you're in, please listen to me. Quit trying to co-sign God's action. He doesn't need you to co-sign what He's doing. Why doesn't God need you to co-sign? He doesn't need you to co-sign because He always understands the end from the beginning. Here's what God said. God said, in this psalm, my power is so that you can have an abundant life. I don't need you to tell me how to run your life, but everything I do is designed to bless your life. You may not understand it, but my ways are higher than your ways. Psalm 55, he says, because uh, my word goes forth out of my mouth and it does not come back void. It always prospers into the thing whereunto I send it. God is making things happen. He really doesn't need our help. All he says, why don't you quit co and just trust me? Why don't you quit giving me conditions and just believe me? Why don't you quit trying to make me, mold me into your kind of God and understand that I am the God, Jehovah, the God Almighty, the God who has things together. Here's what God is saying. I don't need you to co-sign because, first of all, I understand the end from the beginning. I want you to write this scripture down. For Isaiah 46 and 10, God says that I understand the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, I understand the things that are not yet do you hear what God is saying? My counsel shall stand, and I will do my pleasure. God said, first of all, I know what's going to happen before things even get started. Before things kick off, I already got it covered. I got every continuance covered. I got every situation covered. All I want you to do is stand there in faith. God said, I don't need a cosigner. Not only because I understand the intro and the beginning. I don't need a cosigner because my purpose will always come to pass. Job 42 and Two, where Job says, I understand now, God, that you, that what you say will come to pass. Watch what Job says, and I love this. Job is telling God that I understand your purpose cannot be stopped. So do you realize that no matter how bad you feel, no matter what's going on, if you pray to be delivered, your deliverance is on the way. I need somebody to grab that because what you're trying to do is worry about the things that are out of your control. But understand that God says, my purpose for your life will always come to pass. Job began to question God about what he was going through. You ever been there? He was trying to question God about what was happening in his life. Come on, you've been there. And Job started questioning God, and God said, wait a minute, i got some questions for you. Where were you when I created the snow? How come the ocean only comes so far and then goes back on time? God said, where were you when I created the darkness? Where were you when I hid the snow in the summertime and let it come forth in the wintertime? God said, do you understand I am God? It's foolish for you to try to question a God who has all knowledge. He doesn't need you to co-sign because he has a purpose that cannot be stopped. He doesn't need you to co-sign because he understands things from the beginning. Finally, he doesn't need you to co-sign because of Romans 4.17. He said, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations, for I am the God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they were. Listen to what I just said. God said, I'm so strong, I can call stuff to happen. I can call things to come into play even before you know you need them. God is saying, all you need to do is trust me. This message, Psalm 19, will let us know. We don't know the occasion David read it, wrote this song, but we do know when David wrote this song, there was no special time. We believe it was a culmination of all his experiences with God and what he had learned that through the bad times, through the good times, through the ups, through the downs, through the darkness, listen to me, somebody, quit trying to co-sign and get Quit trying to add to what God is doing. Sit tight. He's going to deliver you. Psalm 19 shouts loudly. So we're going to look at three points from this song. And I want you to see what God is saying. The first point is the heavens shout that God is God. The psalm tells us the heavens shout daily. Nature lets us know there must be a God. Secondly, His Word tells us, or shouts, my God is able. His word has done miraculous things in your life. Somebody know you can stop right there and give God a praise. 
His word has done miraculous things in your life. You don't believe me? Look where you are right now. Look at how far he's brought you. His word has done miraculous things in your life. And thirdly, we're going to look at my life. Scouts that I trust in and show enough need. My life. Scouts that I trust in and sure enough need him. Let's look at the first point. See how far we go. The heavens shout, God is God. The song says, the heavens declare the glory of God, the firmament, which is the earth, shows his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, night unto night utter knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Here's what the psalm says. The first line of our psalm says that the psalm expresses God's glory, the glory of God. His glory is all of his attributes, all of his power. The Hebrew word is kabod. It means his splendor, his majesty, his anointing. It is not a part of his character. God's glory is irrevocable, irrefutable. It's something that has been with God. When you start trying to get on the plains with God, you can't stand his glory, God's glory. Another Hebrew word is hadar, and it means his honor, his beauty, his excellence. Many times you miss God because while you were sitting around complaining, you were not worshiping God. You were not giving God glory and honor for what he had done in your life. Isaiah said this in Isaiah chapter 6. When King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. His train filled the temple. Isaiah had to wait until somebody died. Maybe there's somebody holding you up from seeing the glory of God. Maybe you've been focusing on the wrong thing and God has tried to come in and heal your situation. Listen to me. Maybe if you would just sit still and trust him, the power would come in that would get you out of your situation. But Isaiah said, when King Uzziah died, I took my faith out of King Uzziah and trusted God. That's what it is. When King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. But I want you to see this. It's not just the seeing of God that is the blessing. Watch this. He said, when I saw him, there were angels above his throne. Each had six wings. Watch this, six wings. They had two wings in order to cover their face, two wings to cover their feet, and two wings to fly away, meaning that they could not look at the glory of God and live. They could not stand in the presence of the glory of God and live, and they had to fly away every so often because that's how powerful God's Word is. That's how powerful His glory is. Think about something. His glory! He said, God's glory was so powerful, angels could not stand in His presence. God's glory. Remember when Moses had gone up to the mountain to get the Ten Commandments? And when he went up to the mountain to get the Ten Commandments, they began to make another god out of the, gold, out of the golden calf, took their earrings, and they took all their jewelry, and they melted it down, and they began, began to make another god. And as they made this other god, God got angry, sent Moses down. Moses broke the tablets in his own anger. God said, let me destroy them all. Moses interceded with God. But watch this. Here's what happened. When Moses finally talked to God, he said, God, I'm not going to go if you don't go with us because God threatened not to even go with them. Man, it's something when God stops going with you. That's another message I can't even talk about. You're sitting here now lavishing in his presence around you. But what about if God said, yes, I had enough. I'm not even going to go with you. Moses said this, I won't go if you don't go. I'm not going if you don't go, God. And all of a sudden, God's anger quelled. And Moses, the text tells us, In Exodus chapter 34, that Moses began to talk to God face to face. Can you see, talking to God as a man, what an awesome friendship Moses must have had to get into God's presence and talk to him as a man. And as he began to talk to God, he was in God's presence. And then he said, God, you know, it almost like he just jumps off the page. Show me your glory. And God said, Moses, you can't see my glory and live. He said, but what I'm going to do is, 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 is I'm going to put you in the cleft of a rock and I'm going to let my goodness pass by. You know what? God's goodness was so powerful when it passed by. Moses could not turn and see the goodness.
goodness of God, but the Bible tells us that his face glows from just being in God's presence. You want to know why sometimes you're going through hard days, but you're on top of it, and people look at you and you're still worshiping, you're still praising, you're wondering yourself why I'm not crazy. Can I tell you why you're not crazy? Because even though Moses couldn't see the glory of God, isn't it something that God lets believers now see his glory? What am I talking about? The Shekinah glory of God. The word Shekinah is not in the Bible, but Shekinah means his dwelling place. Here's what God does. He says, even in the Old Testament, I just let my glory pass by. But because you are my, in the New Testament, under his grace and mercy, he allows the Shekinah glory to dwell with us. And I cannot tell you something. It doesn't just dwell in the church. It dwells in your house. It can dwell in your car. It can dwell anywhere you are. All you got to do is lift your hands and begin to praise. And the dwelling of God comes down and blankets us. His glory also means it is weighted with anointing. Sometimes God showers you with anointing to protect you. You would have gone under. But God stopped the enemy by covering you with his glory. And the problem is when we get to the point that we're not thanking God for his glory, we don't understand how blessed we are to see his glory. Sometimes we get out of his presence and we wonder why things are going down, they're going down, because you don't understand. I've got to get back in his presence. Remember when Moses was talking to God and he said, I want to see your glory. I believe once you get in God's presence, you want more. There's some of us in here, you wonder why. I just want more God. I know somebody understands what I'm saying. When I get in God's presence and He starts blessing me, I don't want to get out of it. There's been times His presence has His presence has been so wonderful that I know it's my only saving grace. It's my only sanctuary. It's where I know I can handle the troubles of the world. It's like this man who he can't stay away from God. It's like this man who thought his wife was cheating on him. He noticed that they were growing far apart. And so when he looked in her eyes and when they were together, that same sparkle wasn't there. It was like that O.J. song, uh, you're here with me. Your body's here, but your mind is on the other side of town. I know some of y'all don't know the O.J. Y'all have been saved so long, you know what I'm talking about. But he says he saw that distant look in his wife's eyes. And as he did, he sent a detective to go after her. And when he sent the detective to go after her, it says the detective brought back the film. And when he brought back the film, he looked at it, and all of a sudden the man saw that his wife was dancing, her and the other man. He looked on the film and saw his wife at the amusement park laughing. He looked at it and saw his wife not only laughing at the music part, he saw his wife at the beach, running around, having fun. And the man began to cry. And the detective said, I'm sorry to have to show you this. I know you're crying because of, you know, you see your mind, your, your wife cheating, and I know it's just too much for you. And the man said, no, I, I'm crying because I forgot how much fun my wife was. That's like some of us. You're crying for, cause, because you forgot to go back to God. You forgot to see how much fun God is. You forgot to see how powerful God is. You're crying. You're messed up because you've got to get back to that place where you are close to God. And you are with God. So we understand that it says that the firmament showed his handiwork day and today. Watch this. Um, I believe kids nowadays are going to miss out on the things that we had. You understand? We went outside and played. We understood nature. Come on, we ran around. If there was fall, we would rake up leaves and dive in a pile of leaves. Interact with God. We would go outside. I know somebody else has done this. We would catch lightning bugs in the evening and wonder how God put a light on a bug. 
We would run around, and the, the beauty of God is seen in His nature. It says that the heavens declare, and the firmament shows His power. Watch this. The heavens, when you look up at a sky and see the stars, you know that there must be something bigger than me. I remember my wife and I going on vacation. We were sitting down at a beach in Ocean City, and it was late at night, and there was a clear moon. We decided to go out and sit on one of the chairs on the boardwalk. And as we were sitting there looking at God's moon and hearing the water, Rushed back and forth on the beach. We saw God. You see, after a snow, like it's the earth, it might be bad that the snow came, but you ever rode down the road and seen the snow hanging off trees and the layers of God's beauty in the wonder of His snow? All I'm saying is the creation cries out that there is God. And we have to understand that this God, this create, this created God, is more powerful than man. Something I was doing reading this message, man wants to talk. I, I wouldn't even put an atheist in my message tonight. I started going to this direction and say, you know, how to Christian. I'm not even going to tell you that mess because it's foolishness to think that you can do something without God. Do you realize? And here's something I thought about that out of the bil- out of the millions of years and the billions of faces, people that God created, unless there's an occasional identical twin. I thought about, how come God don't run out of faces? How does God make all of us personally different? It's because he's God. He, the, the heavens shout, there must be a God. I believe, I believe the reason is, here's why you ought to know you're special to God. He picked you up and molded you, even though you were in your mother's womb. Even though we can say the DNA and we can talk about all the sperm and eggs, that's not what created you. God said, I created you for a purpose. Somebody ought to see, you can't go down. Quit trying to co-sign when you got a God who personally said, I'm taking care of you. How does God do it? I thought about my doctors. As you get older, I'm going to the doctors. There's eyes, throat, and nose doctors. There's foot doctors. Then there's foot surgeons. There's ear doctors. Then there's ear surgeons. Uh, The man has to have a doctor for everything. But when we need healing from God, we don't have to name parts. All we have to do is say, God, there is a name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, I need a healing. How many know when you tell, when God says lay hands on yourself, God can heal your entire body. You don't have to tell God, I need a surgeon today, God. Lord, I need some pills today. God said, no, all you need is my anointing in your life. And it can touch you in another thing. It can happen wherever you Oh, our man sometimes think they're God. Here's why you co-sign, because you think you can do what God can. You better quit. One time, these scientists went to God and said, you know, God, we're just as smart as you are now. We've been cloning people. We can make a person out of a tiny cell. And they're all up in God's face. These scientists telling God how they, going, how they are just as smart as them. God, we believe we can create somebody just like you did. God said, mm-hmm, you do, huh? Well, how about this? Let's have a context. Let's create a man. And you have to do it the way I did it. You know, I, I bent down and I scooped up and I created man out of the dust. So I want you to do that. And so the scientist said, it's a deal. And the scientist got there and said, well, all we're going to do is take this dirt back to our laboratory. We're going to be fine. They bent down to grab the dirt. God said, oh, no. No, 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 no. no. If you're going to be me, get your own dirt. Uh-huh. See, God is from the beginning. He is everlasting to everlasting. When you start talking about, I can make it without God, you better know how to get your own strength. You better know how to get your own joy. You better know how to get your own peace. You better know how to get your own ability to walk through the next storm in your life. Do you hear me? The heavens are saying, you don't need to help God. God can be God all by himself. It's the glory. He is a created God. He is a consistent God. It says day unto day utters. Watch this. He said he made the sun like a bridegroom who is running after the wedding 
to go to his honeymoon chamber. That's what he calls the sun when the sun floats out in the morning. Or he said he's like a strong man who is already has trained and wants to run a race. God said, that's how consistent my life. He said, when you go to bed at night, I'll create the morning. When you wake up in the morning, I'll create the safety of the day, and I'll create another night. Oh, with so much that the Jeremiah had to say in Lamentations, great is your faithfulness, God. We take for granted some of the faithful things that God is going to make another morning. You know, when the old folks used to say, I thank God for being in my right mind, thank you for another day of life up a strip. Sometimes we take that for granted, but God had not given you that, you would not be in your right mind. You would not have the peace of today. He is a consistent God. And the text says that he, he goes forth and everywhere he is, uh, uh, his language speaks. I like in Romans when it says, even when they deny God, they could look up and see that there was a God. God said, even when you try to deny me, you know that I'm God because everything speaks of me as God. He is the owner and the creator of all things. And if God created us, he can bless us. I tell you often about uh, I, I, my, my hobby is walking or running or exercising, and I've been out walking, and I'll never forget the time that this lady and man was walking a dog in front of me, and I was coming along at a slow pace, and I passed them, and the dog was startled and growled, and the dog was getting away from the lady. The dog was coming up, so I happened to turn because I saw the dog getting anxious, and I remember as I was going down, I turned around. The lady could barely hold on to the leash, so I was getting ready to run, but you know what happened? The man stopped and said, hey! Get back here. When the dog heard the man, he stopped and healed. And his growl got lower. And I was able to walk on because the owner had spoken. I believe that when the devil comes after us and he gets too loud, he gets too close because he is the creative and he is the God who owns us. I believe we benefit. We don't even know when he does it. But I believe God looks at the devil and says, hey, leave my servant alone. I believe God said, stop. You can't do anything to him right now. I believe right now that when God gets to a place and he is trying, when the enemy is trying to pull us down, God shows us that he is our owner. owner. I believe he said, he told Jeremiah, I am the potter, you are the clay. Not only does the heaven declare his words shouts of his ability. I love this word. The law, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The Hebrew word for perfect is without blemish, has no flaw. His word contains seed to make any situation brand new. It allows us to get a new beginning or allow us to get the victory over every circumstance. Right now, if something is going on in your life, all you got to do is speak a word over that situation, and the word creates a new situation that brings you into a place that God can create again. What am I talking about His word? Just ask Nicodemus. Nicodemus went to God and said, how can a man be born again when he is old? God said, by faith and believing in Him and by His word. Once you believe in God's word, you become brand new. The Bible said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. What does a new creation mean when we come into the word of God? It means that if I'm right now, if you're in a situation that's pulling you down, you can make that situation brand new by finding a word that can turn that situation around. His word is full of that kind of power. If you're living, uh, losing a battle, God can help you win the battle. Your word, his word can take you from going to heaven to going to hell. You remember the woman at the well? She had no reason. She thought her life was over. And there she was until Jesus came along and he said, take a drink of this water. The, the word of God changed her life. This woman went from somebody who was an outcast, somebody who did not know what her future was going to be, to somebody that was shouting, come see a man. Who told me everything I ever went through? God's word. Come on. I need you to get some faith in the word. The Bible says heaven and earth will pass away, but his word is going to stand. You can put a word on it, and it changes your situation. Somebody say that. Put a word on it, and it will change. Then it says the testimony of the Lord is sure. His testimony is sure, meaning that his testimony is unmovable. See, you can't change me once I got a testimony. You can say all you want to say about what God can't do, but when I got a testimony to back me up, a testimony, it says that 
testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Here's what happens. When I get in trouble sometimes, I can get simple enough to believe that the devil's going to win. I can get simple enough to believe that I'm going down. I can get simple enough to believe this pain is never going away. But then I reach back and grab one of my testimonies. I start saying, I know my God is able, because if he did it before, he can do it again. I start believing that, hey, I was sick two years ago. Healed me with his word. I start thinking, we were about to get put out of our house ten years ago. I went through that situation, I can go through it again. I just believe, no matter how bad it is, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise and simple. The statutes of the Lord, when you look at the word of God, it tells us that his statutes um, are right. And rejoice with the heart. What does God mean by statues of right? The word right means that they are full of gladness. They help us straighten up. They rejoice our heart. Why do they rejoice our heart? Because when God's word comes in, we have a word to rejoice. We grab a word, and all of a sudden, where there used to be sadness, there is rejoicing. You remember Paul and Silas were locked in jail, and the Bible said at midnight, they began to sing praises unto the Lord. And when they sang praises, I'm telling somebody how to shake your house up now. They began to sing praises, and all of a sudden it says that the very jail shook. Because when we sing praises, we rejoice. Here's what happens. The Word of God, His statutes, His Word, what He has set up, gets in our heart. It makes us praise Him, and our praises set us free. So the Word of God commandments. I'm just telling you that His Word scouts about his ability. Not only does his word tell us that it is pure, his commandments are pure. That means they are free from any evil and enlighten our eyes. Oh, I don't have time to stay here. But commandments of God are pure and it enlightens our eyes. God's word opens our eyes. It may not feel good for us to do what God says. I'm talking to somebody right now, but if you do it, the results are going to be, your eyes are going to be open, and I know God can bless me. I was talking to someone who never believed in tithing until they tithed and saw God open a window and pour them out a blessing that they didn't have room to believe. Receive. I know somebody who said, I'll never forgive somebody. And when they forgave, it was like taking a yoke off of their neck because God's commandments are free from evil. And once your eyes get open, you can start seeing bigger blessings. You can start seeing more anointing. You can start seeing God move in your life. Listen to me, somebody. Follow his word. He'll take the chains off. He'll fix you because that's the commandments of God. The fear of the Lord is clean, liberating. I know why that is. Because once you fear God, you stop doing things because you fear God. Someone wonders why someone can go to rehab after rehab and not be free. But once they find God, freedom can come. Because you do it, because, of, you know, we don't act good all the time because we want to be good. Can I get a witness? Come on. There's some things we would do if we could do it. I know I'm not talking to everybody, but there's some things you would do if you could do it. And sometimes you do it. And you know what happens? That fear, that respect, that awe of God gets in you. And when you get the fear of God in you, it makes your life clean. It cleans out the sin from your life, and you become free. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. I never believed this, but God's judgments are what make us righteous. God's judgments are what is true. So once God, and here's what I'm saying, I would rather fall into the hand of God than any man. God's judgments make us true. God's judgments are what set us free. God has mercy with his judgments. Um, he, uh, our, uh, judge, uh, our sin can lead us to a place where we're in darkness and don't even know it. Remember when David said with Bathsheba, he didn't even know he had done anything wrong until Nathan showed up. Because darkness and sin. But God said, I'm going to judge you, but in judging you, I'm also going to set you free and bless you. Because that's the kind of God that we serve. There was a young man in jail. I heard his testimony one morning watching a television broadcast. And he talked about how he was stuck in this four by seven foot cell and he couldn't believe he was in jail. He would scream. When he got out to the population, he would try to play tough because you can't show weakness in jail. But when he got back to his cell, he would start 
screaming, why am I here? Why am I here? He knew he had done wrong, but he starts screaming, why am I here? Somebody to wake me up. Somebody to put me to bed. Somebody to tell me when to cut the lights off. He knew his life was over. And then one day he decided to go to the chapel. He went to the chapel to a service. And there he got born again. He got on his knees and he thanked God for getting born again. And he said, now I know why God put me here. Yes, I did evil. And yes, it was a bad thing. But God put me here. He judged me so I could find him. Every time God judges, he does it to bless us. His word shouts, he's God. Jeremiah said like this, it's like fire. Shut up in my bones. Every time I try to turn back, his word ignites a fire. Let me close this message. It says there, once I understand the heavens declare who he is, his creative power, his ownership, once I know that his word has the ability to do all the things this psalm says it can do, I then know that my life, my existence, lets him know that I need him and trust him. See, what I'm saying is, once I figure out God's word, I love what the psalmist says. He says, I found out his word is sweeter than honey in a honeycomb. How many know that's how God's word is? God's word becomes more precious to you than anything else. There's a whole lot of things I can't live without, but I know I've got a witness. I can't live without God's word. Come on, man. It might seem simple. We, we take it for granted sometimes, but you know you can't live with yea, though I walk. Through the valley of the shadow of death, I will have, I will fear no evil. You know, you can't live with um, uh, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord. You know, you can't live without the Lord is my light and my salvation. You can't live without the fact that God says, I will supply all of your needs. Think about the word, how sweet it is that when you get back in the corner, you have the sweetness of God's word. Can I tell you something? God does not need a co-signer. He don't need any help to keep your life in order. Quit missing your blessings and start focusing in on the splendor and the power of God. The psalmist said what, that God keeps me from presumptuous evil, that God blesses me so that he, he takes me out of the realm where I would do stuff. Sometimes God protects me from myself. He keeps me when I don't want to be kept. He keeps me when the enemy's after me. Somebody hear this. He keeps us. There's some days that God has kept you for months at a time. There's some times when God kept the enemy off your back, and he blessed you through. And finally, the Bible tells us, Scripture we all know. He keeps you upright when you read the text. He doesn't let sin have dominion over you. So I get so enamored with God that I say, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in His sight. It's like I wake up and even though evil might attack first, the words that come out of my mouth are godly words. I begin to worship and praise God, saying, God is worthy. God is able. Or I speak to God about protecting me during this day. You know what I'm saying? I, when you get so enamored with God, the words that come out of your mouth are words that bless God. Even when you say something wrong, you want to turn it around and bring it back to God. That's the words of my mouth. Meditations in my heart. Those meditations, that's what keeps me inside my spirit, man. Hungry for the word of God and waiting on me to stop. I dare you to try to stop and meditate on the word of God. And the psalmist ends with, He is my strength and my redeemer. You want to get healed? You want to be delivered? You want to change your situation? God does not need you to co-sign his power. He doesn't need you to co-sign his strength. He doesn't need you to co co-sign his ability. He just said, take me as I am and trust me. I'm enough to get you out. Let's go. Somebody may not be saved today. The psalmist says, the heaven tells us 
that we live in God's kingdom. So pray this prayer. Say, Lord, I need you. I need your life-changing power. Come now, Father. Enter my heart. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. And since I believe it and confess it, I am saved. Somebody, if you prayed that prayer, then you, your life has just been changed by that sin. This Pastor Duncan said, don't forget, share this message with somebody. And when you get ready to go in, turn yourself. Can you please stop falling down? Say, wait a minute. God does not need my help. He's got enough power to get me out of here. All I have to do is sit back, wait for the miracle, wait for the blessing. Thank you. God bless you. See you, Bob. Take it to him and leave it there. I was down, but with no way up, and I needed some help. Everybody Breathing but not living Just existing Well, and I needed some help Somebody told me that Jesus Will set you free What he did